I make about $3,000 a month in completely passive income selling stock photos, stock media, stock videos. It's my favorite money maker because I can quit anytime I want and money will keep coming in for years, maybe even decades to come. It ultimately proved to be one of my keys to achieving financial independence and you can absolutely do it too, even without expensive equipment or experience. In this video, I'm going to talk about why most people who create stock media fail or quit. I'll walk you through how I do it even without professional equipment. And if you make it to the end, I'll tell you exactly what my key to success ultimately was. Hey, my name is Christian, but you can call me Lil. Okay, so one thing that I love about this money-making method is that we, I can just do it anywhere, anytime, whatever I happen to be doing. Like today, I'm just taking my wife out for a day out. Can you say hi? Are you like really bored already? Oh, hi. So just like whatever we're doing, I just film it and then I turn it into stock video. <clears throat> and today we've decided on an adventure. We're going to go around to five different parts of London that have, that represent like five different parts around the world that either we love or we want to go to. Right, love? Mm -hmm. First stop. Alright, we've made it to South Hall, the first stop on our adventure. <laughs> this is also known as Little India, because there are a lot of people here who are from India or of Indian descent. It is still unmistakably London, but you can get some of the best Indian food in the world right here. So if you made it this far and you don't actually know what stock media, stock video, stock photos are, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for humoring me. But when you take photos, you can also upload them to sites like Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, Pond5, and you can sell licenses to that footage. And it's it's passive income. It just people can keep buying it, buying it, buying it literally forever. Most stock photographers will be lucky to make even $10 an hour after all is said and done. And this is where my first tip comes in. I don't do stock photos. I only do stock video. So stock photography kind of hit its heyday back in like the late 90s, the early 2000s. Um, but then because your media lives online forever, the market just kind of got oversaturated and things are only getting worse. Even since I started doing stock media two years ago, Shutterstock, which is the biggest stock company has completely restructured the way that they pay people. I think if you compare average to average, I actually make something like 70 times more on a video than I do on a photo. And yeah, videos are harder to produce, but they're not 70 times harder. It's supposed to be herbal Coca-Cola. I think there was a phase where they tried to experiment. It's like mm. you're chewing gum and drinking Coke at the same time. I love the sound of that. Any of these problems? No. No? Are you sure? Her super herbal. This is our bus, yeah. Yeah, sure. That's a stock video. So we were trying to go to a certain place and apparently there were pedestrians on the train line. Now we're taking a bus. I don't know if we're gonna make it there. So I won't get as much stock video out of this as I'd hope, but who says you can't take stock on the bus? You're gonna notice here, this is kosher. That's Hebrew, the writing on the wall over there. Oh. Okay, yeah. So that's oh, I didn't. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That's so. Let's take get off here. You wanna get off here? To film this. I mean, maybe we're not allowed, but I wanna get off here. It's like. Oh my god. They look like so much fun. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's the whole thing. <laughs> Okay, okay so it. London is so diverse. We ended up in the, the Jewish part of town. This part of town, this part of the city has like the highest concentration of Jews in London. One of the highest concentration in the world, um, both Israeli Jews and like Ashkenazi European Jews. And so we're gonna try out a few different foods. We got that bagels from a proper Jewish bakery. And we're heading to what I've been told is the best hummus place outside the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's really important. What is important? Tell me. Well, seeing other areas within London that aren't tourist centric because we don't have time yeah. to explore. But when we do get time to explore, this can actually make you appreciate where you live or it could make you think maybe I should move. So what does this have to do with stock video? Cool, let me take a photo. So I think this is like a spontaneous and more organic way to shoot video and content, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's how, right. But I think a biggest tip is to hold your camera more rather than packing it away. Put it in once your hand, it's, right? Once it's in packed away, it's just another layer of reasons. That like, you shouldn't be You're shooting. trying to justify it. Is this picture worthy? Is this not picture worthy? And that, that decision making kind of 
of ruins the fun of yeah. creating. Doesn't it? Yeah. That's true. I it mean. is a good point. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. My next point is consistency. Stock video sites like Shutterstock and Adobe Stock, they have an algorithm just like YouTube, just like Instagram, just like Facebook, just like everybody. And the more you post, the more strength, the more authority you have in a particular subject, in a particular field with photos and videos. And so the truth is that everything takes time to gain that strength. So like when I first started uploading stock video, I don't think I made a sale for like three months. But that first batch that I uploaded now sells pretty regularly. Everything that I film today and edit tomorrow and, and publish the next day won't sell for weeks, eight, 10 weeks. But then it will continue selling regularly and regularly. So I'm always investing today for tomorrow. You could call this next section something like don't let perfect be the enemy of good or quantity over quality, whatever you want. But the truth is you don't know what's going to sell. And anybody who tells you that they know exactly what's going to sell is kind of a liar. The truth is that a lot of stock video producers who look at my work will probably see that it's kind of mediocre. A lot of the stock video that you see online on Shutterstock, on Adobe Stock, on wherever you'll see is perfect, perfect in every way. Perfect setup, perfect this, perfect that. And the truth is that while yes, maybe it sells slightly better than non-perfect footage like mine, it takes so much longer to set up. The fact that I can take like a quick video here, a quick video there of like my dinner and my wife, and then over the course of its lifetime, it will sell 100, 200, 300 dollars. I mean, that's a winning combination. I can probably take 10, 20, maybe 30 times as much stock footage as the next stock video producer. And in my experience, you don't really know what's gonna sell until it's up online. So your money is almost always in quantity. As long as it meets like a minimum quality requirement, like everything's in focus, well-framed, smooth footage, you're basically in. And this is where I get to, you don't really need expensive professional equipment to do this job. Yes, I have $5,000 worth of equipment filming me right now, and I use it because I have it, but I didn't start doing this with this equipment. I started with a $400 camera and a smartphone, and I have sold thousands of dollars worth of footage just straight out of my phone. Of course, you can take whatever money you earn and put it directly back into your equipment to earn more money, because let me tell you, it does help to have this. I think. Are you happy, love? I said, are you happy? This is a Northern Line train by Charles Park. Okay, so we actually picked the perfect day to go out because now in London, it's pouring down rain. And you know what that means. As an American living in London, I'm obligated to make a cup of tea and leave the tea bag in the cup all day long. <laughs> and then of course, throw the tea in the harbor. Okay, you are gonna stay in there all day. Okay, you guys already know that Deborah and I went to this proper Jewish bakery yesterday to get real boiled bagel. It's okay. Honestly, I'm a bit disappointed. Okay, it's not the worst bagel I've ever had, but it's definitely like too dry, too fluffy. It should be denser, should be more moist. So today's kind of a special day because during COVID, my sister graduated from Cambridge University. She lives here in the UK like me. So they're having a late, a delayed graduation and we're going to head over there to celebrate with her. She got her master's, I'm proud of her. Also, I had an interview with her. She was a, she was a perfectly average B and C student in high school. She managed to get a bachelor's from Harvard and a master's from Cambridge. And and she did it in this pretty unorthodox way. Um, and I'm really proud of her for that. I, I'm going to publish an interview I did with her about how you can do that too, how anybody can graduate from Harvard and Cambridge, even if you got mediocre grades. That's coming soon, maybe next week, I'm not sure. I'll talk a bit more about stock video on the train. What is it called again? St. Pancras. True story. That's actually where Harry Potter went through platform nine and three quarters. Mabel, what are you doing? You look so innocent, my baby girl. <laughs> Okay, so I, I wanna use this time to talk a little bit about the equipment that I started with, the evolution of the equipment. And I'll give a couple of examples of footage that I you know, obtained with each camera that I had. My two-year-old is um, trying to get my attention. So I started producing stock video with a Canon 6D. You can pick them up for less than $400 on eBay there. It's really not an expensive camera. Um, but I've also produced a lot of the video that I have with an iPhone 8. That was, I've got an iPhone 13 now, but I upgraded from the iPhone 8. And there's, there's some trick to producing video with your phone that's good Good enough for stock. It has to be well framed, it has to be well lit. You're not gonna get that, you know, beautiful bokeh on the background like this one has. We're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> All that to say that you can start with 
a smartphone or a cheap DSLR and, and get somewhere. It's not going to get you all of the perfect shots, but you use, of course, you reinvest that money into better equipment in the future. So then I graduated onto the 6D Mark II, which I got because it has autofocus in video mode. Um, and so I paired that with the, basically the cheapest gimbal I could find. Then we get into like the EOS R. And this is when I thought that I really like graduated. The EOS R really changed the game for me because being the first time that I had been shooting in that like high quality 4K footage, I got a sale that for like a single clip, I think I made like a hundred dollars on a single clip. And what it made me realize is there's actually something to this. It was just a video that I snapped in five minutes and suddenly I had a hundred dollars. And I realized the 60 Mark II, I was only making, you know, five to seven dollars per clip. It's all in 1080p. And some people do buy 1080p footage, but the 4K really makes the big difference. At that point forward you could really just see me with the with the gimbal on my hip with the EOS R on top of it pretty much everywhere I went. I'd walk around literally all day just like shooting whatever came to my mind, whatever I felt like, whatever we were doing in the moment. But obviously the keep keeping the gimbal around and walking around town with it is kind of inconvenient and so I, I, I kept doing that until I had enough money to buy this, my EOS R5. And the reason that I bought this an 8 stop stabilization um, mixed with slow motion 120 FPS at 4K. So the R5 doesn't actually add any quality to my video over the R. The R is like, I don't know, $1,700 versus like nearly $4,000. But what it does do is it removes the need to carry a gimbal everywhere. So I'm shooting with about $5,000 worth of equipment. I don't recommend that you go out and do that. If you're just getting started, it's perfectly fine to be shooting literally on a cell phone. Something like an iPhone 13 or even an iPhone 12 will be far and away better than the footage that I got with my iPhone 8. And then just like with any other business, you re invest into your equipment, into your craft. So one question that I get probably more often than any other one is like, what shots sell the best? Well, first of all, a lot of what sells really well is like food. I, I, but the truth is that like half of my portfolio is food. So it is kind of hard to quantify exactly what sells best. And because my portfolio has like a high concentration of the things that sell well. So it's, it's kind of hard to quantify. So I would say food sells really well. I mean, videos of my kids sell really well. Um, but they're also like totally random shots. Like uh, this shot of, you know, Mexico City, the sign that has made me like $300. I mean, of course it's worth getting that shot. You might be surprised what actually sells and what doesn't sell. I say that pretty much anything that's going to get accepted is is worth trying to sell. Basically my only requirements for shooting are that there's a clear subject, uh, it's framed well, it's exposed well and it's in focus. I do try to get, you know, like really nice, buttery, smooth motion, but I mean, pretty much everything other than that, you can try and do better, but if you miss the shot because you're just like waiting for the perfect, then you lost. Almost there. The contemporary advice online basically has you setting up that perfect shot, making sure that everything's perfect. Don't, they're like, I swear, they're like, don't even try if it's not perfect. But the truth is that most of that information comes from a different era. The days of Getty Images are long gone. Getty Images is a, is a stock photo site that sells their photos for like hundreds of dollars. And so if you can get onto Getty Images, then great. And, and you can put those perfect photos up there that are gonna sell for of dollars every time, then great, go do that. But for 99.9% .9 of us, Getty Images is like a far off distant memory. The current climate is quantity. So we've arrived in Cambridge and we're just gonna film some stock video. If you talk to somebody else who like produces stock video and that's like what they do, you'll notice that they oftentimes, you know, buy really good ingredients for the food. They buy equipment that looks really nice in photos and videos and that sort of thing. Sometimes they'll even hire actors and rent out studios. And so by their standards, it might not look that great, but I think most of them would be surprised at how much money you can actually make just filming anything and everything you come into contact with. I mean, you have to imagine that this, this video of this Greek flag only took me 30 seconds to film and it'll take me another five minutes to edit. It only has to sell once for five to $20 to make it totally worth it, obviously. Not to mention there are like tons of people who really need that more authentic, uh, dare I say crappy kind of look, you know? Um, not everybody wants it to be absolutely perfect in every way. All the friends. Look, wow, Mava. Mava, get in there. Uh, we're celebrating my graduation. Oh. Okay. I don't. That's off. I've got nothing left. Yeah, I'm a one-trick pony. I don't know if my hood is too 
back. I think you were doing <laughs> something. No, I'm not. My shoes just fell off. How did they fall off? I'm worse. I forgot. You just had your face printed out. <laughs> <laughs> That's first to me. Yeah, you too. The firepower. <laughs> All right, well that's it, Cambridge in the bag. I would call that pretty much a success. Um, my sister has officially graduated and I think we're pretty good. Do not turn this off yet. I'm gonna tell you the most important points when I start editing and keyboarding this footage tomorrow because it spends only like 20% of their time actually filming and the rest editing, keyboarding, uploading, that sort of thing. So what actually makes the biggest difference to being able to produce more, to do more is putting systems in place and getting those other things out of the way. Don't try to get everything. When you are doing this, it like I said, you, you film anything and everything that you happen to be doing, but if you try too hard to get every little thing, you're gonna miss out on a lot. A lot of life, not just a lot of shots, a lot of life. I've got three lives right here. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Mommy, you're welcome. <sighs> Ooh, we made it. Okay, true story. This is where Harry Potter lived. At, under the staircase, I think. I don't, I, don't, I don't see a staircase. I don't understand. Yeah, push it through the wall, Malaya. Push it through the wall. Malaya, push it through the wall. Go, go, go. Ah. I got into the train station. Are you in? Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Oh, okay. Apparently that had nothing to do with the staircase. I have no idea what I was thinking. I left my family behind. Okay, whatever happened. Oh love, it's been such a long day. It's like three hours there. <laughs> Good night. All right, <sighs> welcome to the most important part of this entire video. Now, if you spent any amount of time producing this stock footage like I have, you will know that actually filming the shots accounts for like maybe 10 to 20% of your time. The rest of your time is meant thinking about what to shoot, is about framing your shot, is about setting things up, is about editing, is about keywording. Now those last two things are what I'm gonna talk about now because if you can bring those things down to a minimum, you can bring your earnings per hour up to a maximum. I use virtual assistants for every part of the process except the filming. I film what I'm doing in the moment, what I have around me, and then I leave basically the rest to my virtual assistants. And the reason is because time is money. I'm not saying that in like the weird cliche sort of way. It's, it's like literally, we stress so much about work. We, we live in a culture that is very work centric, but I personally want to live my life. And somebody asked me, like, why stock? Why did I do stock media? And the answer I gave him is true, but it's only really the beginning. It's really why I started. I started stock because it was a natural transition from being a photographer and because I really wanted to focus on passive income. But ultimately why I stuck with it and why I continued with it is because what I wanted is more time. It was such a natural transition. It was such a natural thing to do that I can just film while spending time with my family. I can pay for the dinner because I filmed it. I know it's such a weird concept, but I don't think I've ever failed to pay for a meal that I filmed. Like, like you order anything from a restaurant. And the weird thing is that people love it. People love it when you film their food. We were at the, um, at the, at the Indian restaurant at the beginning of this video, and they were like so thrilled that we were videoing their food. They thought we were like food critics or something. I'm about to show you some videos from my vacation in Turkey. I think I recorded like 300 clips or something from the whole vacation. And I would be shocked if that doesn't pay for the entire vacation within a year. And probably before, you know, in the next decade or so, two, three times over. I mean, it's like a thousand pounds. And on average, my clips make like 50 cents a month in my portfolio, something like that. So, I mean, that'll be, you know, once those are up online and selling, that'll probably be worth something like $150 a month. Yeah, yeah, which comes to which comes to over $1,500 in a year. So, um, so yeah, no, that it almost definitely pay for the whole vacation. And so it really just like it frees me up. I think, how can I spend my time? I spend my time with my family. I spend my time buying meals, having activities, doing fun things. And then I have my virtual assistants edit the videos. I have my virtual assistants 
keyword the videos. I have this tool that I built years ago that uploads all of my footage to all of the stock sites automatically. And so that's why I do stock. I do stock because it's liberating. You can do whatever you want and you don't have to justify it. It's, let's see here. So what I would do rather than what I just did is you go in, you bring all of those clips into your timeline. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to copy, you go Command C to copy. This is not going to be like a, this is not a tech tutorial. This is not like how to edit your videos. This is how you speed things up. This is how you make more money ultimately because the more time or the less time you spend editing, the more time you're going to uh, be filming, which is ultimately the money maker. This is a numbers game more than anything else. So we've got this. Um, we're just gonna pretend like I have edited this. This is essentially, got nice shot of like a pride flag on a old Victorian building. Um, gong, uh, I don't know. Oh, <clears throat> this is my wife and she's a model walking her baby on her phone doing whatever. So let's just pretend like I've already, this is my baby girl. So let's just pretend like I, I have already cropped and edited and stabilized all of this footage. So you go through the entire timeline. You're gonna download this little tool called frame.io and this is uh, really difficult to work. I've gotten lots of complaints that this doesn't work, but it does. Um, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but I had to go back and forth like 10 times with the makers of this app because this isn't what it was intended for. But essentially, if you install frame.io um, and you go, here, you go to here like this, you can tell it to split everything into clips. Is I might put, I might have like 500 clips here um, ready to go. And then you just leave it to export all night so obviously you're not editing nothing takes very long so essentially what you're doing is you are you're going to edit the entire timeline as fast as you can and so you can actually do this with a computer that actually isn't particularly powerful now that's that's really what the difference is here a really powerful computer can handle you know editing and exporting at the same time even exporting 10 clips individually while editing a different timeline maybe mine maybe could I don't know but <clears throat> what this allows me to do is I can edit the entire timeline while nothing is exporting, get all of my work done, and then I can leave it to the computer to do the rest and export all of the clips individually. If, if you can imagine, you know, you have like an eight hour day, typically you will spend, let's just say, one and a half hours filming and then three hours editing. I've just cut that down to one hour editing, essentially, um, which means that I can film for two more hours. Then... We have all of our clips right here. Now this is this is a, a system that I've built. If any of you guys, if you've been following me for some amount of time, you probably already know that I own a company called Pick Your Photo. It is a, a photographer's booking platform. Um, and it's essentially, it's essentially software online that a photographer can subscribe to and it gives them a series of tools. Um, now if I go into my creator dashboard, for example, my internet is actually really slow here, but let me just show you this. Um, I, have, I have these galleries and I have my stock media. You can sell stock media directly on your Pick Your Photo profile if you have one. What I'm about to say doesn't require a Pick Your Photo profile. It's just what I do to make it easier. So if I'm, if I'm in my dashboard here and I say upload, it opens up this page, um, which I can drag. I'm not gonna do this now because my internet's really slow right here, so I'll just open up a, a different gallery that I already have here. Um, and so this is like a set of media that my virtual assistants have edited specifically for stock. Once I mark this, once I mark a gallery as complete, for, as stock, what's gonna happen is it's going to go into this section over here, you slash edit your stock media. And this is where I or one of my virtual assistants can go in and can, can create, can put keywords. Uh, on on essentially on the media right and so what's going to happen is we can add in all of our all of our media oh sorry all of our keywords in here um, and then we can check all of this so that it gets uploaded to all of these stock media and that right there is essentially what's made the biggest difference is this one place where I can add the title the description the keywords um, the categories uh, my model releases and property releases and, and all of that stuff and it will and it will automatically automatically upload it to Adobe Stock, to Shutterstock, to 123RF, to Deposit Photos, to iStock, to Pond5, to uh, what did I say? What did I say? <laughs> I don't remember which ones I already said. But um, by far, my biggest money makers are Adobe Stock, our Shutterstock, and iStock. I think. Oh, sorry, Pond Five as well. Pond Five, Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, and iStock. Those those four are far and away my biggest money makers. I think I think the four of them together make up like make up three thousand dollars by themselves, if I'm not mistaken. So those two things are really what made the biggest difference. It's this this system that I have for bulk editing across an entire shoot all at once. Um, 
Um, it is a system where I have, I have the title, the keywords, the description, the categories, and everything else, and it will just automatically upload it to all of the other websites. Now, if you do, if you do want to join Pick Your Photo, or if you do want to sign up with a virtual assistant, you can do either one or neither. Please get in touch. Put in the comments below. I'll be sure to reach out. Um, but you do not need any of that to do this. Now, the system that I have for editing is already going to save you at least half your time. Oh, thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. I, I, I hope that I've gone through everything that you need to know. I've gone through how I got started and how you can get started doing stock. The fact that videos are worth way more than photos. I hope that I've really drilled that into your brain because it's 100% factual. <laughs> I've talked about what I film, how much money I make. I've talked about how my virtual assistants and how you can bulk edit your footage to save massive amounts of time. Talked about keywording and uploading it to different stock agencies. And I, I, this was never meant to be like uh, going into great detail about every little thing. It's not a technical how to or anything like that. Um, but I hope it gives you a really good starting point. And if you if you think that I didn't go to enough detail, you don't understand something, please let me know in the comments below. I will be watching. I will be responding. I really do want to help. That's it. See you guys.